Hello guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartington Family Farms, and today back in the States. Exciting stuff. We're heading down to the Farm Progress Show, and it is Wednesday, the 20th, 30th, something like that of August. I uh, got up real early this morning, left at like, excuse me, 5.30, nice and a little foggy out. And I'm driving south, I live about three hours from the Farm Progress Show, so I'm just going to make it a long day. Got up at 5.30, I'm going to try to stay at the show till like 8, well, the show and after festivities till about 8. And uh, we're just going to enjoy it for a day because I have other stuff going on. I got to go to Waterloo for work tomorrow, which is the tractor factory. Um, so I gotta be doing that so I can't stay down here very long. Meet some people, we're gonna see some equipment, we're gonna have some fun, so stay tuned. Also, Illinois construction is terrible. There it is. There's Farm Progress Show or Progress Village, whatever they're calling it. So we are just getting there. Hopefully I can get in there in about 15 minutes. It's 8.45. And I look forward to chatting with uh, anybody who's anybody who stops me. Like I said in the previous video, I'm wearing a red hat, red shirt, and I'm pretty tall, so I'll be pretty hard to miss. This is a whole thing. I haven't been down to here. I've actually never came as a as a show big person, show attender. I've only ever been to Decatur once before this. That was in 2017, and I actually worked it for deer. I was here for as the sprayer expert. I love the horses. Get a stepping. Let's go walk around and see what we can see. But uh, first off, case booth. Let's go take a look. There's the electric farmo over there. They just came out with it. The 75 horsepower uh, all electric tractor. It's kind of neat for uh, more like residential jobs where you can run for four hours and plug it in. There's the new quad track. That's what I wanted to take a look at it. Yeah, so that's the new Steiger 715 rated horsepower, 778 peak horsepower, brand new undercarriage. It's pretty sweet. Saw a lot of these balers over in Europe. A lot of square bailing that happens over there. So here's the new Macdon head, FD250. The biggest difference, that 250 series that's really helpful, these contour buddies. So these basically, a Macdon always before has been able to hinge. So it's not a true flex draper, it's a hinge draper. So it's got two hinge points right there. And that really helps for soybeans. But when you're cutting off the ground for wheat, you can't really, it just rides on those two gauge wheels in the back there. It just floats, it doesn't actually follow the ground. But with the Contour Buddy system, it allows it to basically unlock those wings like you're running in flex mode, but it uses those wheels to actually follow the ground. Yes, yeah, so like I said, before in float mode, it just rode off these gauge wheels, but now it has these four contact points. Now that is a sprayer that I want. <laughs> that is sweet. Patriot edition, Patriot. That's awesome. A lot of cool stuff in the Case IH booth today. So they came out with a brand new 60 series, 160 series combine. Right there, it's basically the, the legacy series with the uh, with the automation package on there. It's pretty cool. I might see if I can find Leo, the, uh, the marketing manager for combines. We can interview him a little bit later. Chatted with him a little bit, but he had to run off to another interview. So for those of you guys who don't know, this is the America's largest outdoor farm show. It might even be North America's largest outdoor farm show. And I can't underestimate how large this is. From that end of the show to this end of the show, it took me a five minute walk. And that's the short way. It's a much longer this way. So it's a, it's a pretty big show. It's, I'm not gonna be able to get through everything again. I only have one day today, but I'm gonna try to hit the highlights if I can. Like this big old Kloss 8800, the lime green puke machine. As I like to call it, just because it's got puke green colors. But I want to look at this flexing corn head with Gehringhoff. It's pretty cool. All right, guys, so I'm with CJ with Gehringhoff. CJ, what do you do for him? I am the Illinois Territory Manager. Perfect. So Illinois, Iowa, pretty dang close. And as you guys can see behind him, we have a pretty impressive corn head. So what is this, a 16 row 30? Yep, 16 row 30 AFT folder. AFT, First one what, out there. What is AFT saying for him? Uh, adaptive flex technology. Awesome, and as you can kind of see, it's not a not a rigid frame like just about 99% of corn that's out there. Tell me a little bit about this. What is it beneficial? Where, where would you like to see that used? So the thing with this corn, it actually splits in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, we run a header height control on both ends and in the center. So if you're going through hills, terraces, yep. uh, that header height control will actually move that head up or down depending on, on your terrain. Yep, 
And that would be really beneficial because as you guys have seen in my area, it's extremely choppy, extremely rolly. Sometimes we'll even stubble that's two feet tall, which isn't good for tillage passes. It isn't good for anything. You'd like to have all the stalks get chopped up and ran through the corn head. Yep. So that's why, you know, going from a 30 foot corn head to a 30 foot AFT, you said, yes. would be extremely beneficial. So I believe on the 30 foot, how much flex do you guys have? Do you know it's around 13 degrees. 13 degrees, man, that's that's probably what, 25 inches, something like yeah, that? Yeah, it depends on, on the, if, if you go, from um, a 12 row to a 16 row. Yep. It depends on, on, on that, on, on your actual flex. Yep, that makes sense. But having that flexibility as opposed to a rigid frame in, in corn country would be awesome. Yes. And I guess, and you have it, I see you have it on a folding platform before. Yeah. Is that so the first time? Yep, first time here. I think back in, when we were here in 21, we unveiled the actual first yep. AFT head. Yep. Uh, a lot of guys were asking for a folding version. <laughs> so here we go. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate your time, CJ. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Walking around the Agco booth now, and this thing looks familiar. You guys remember when I was down in Brazil, I saw quite a bit of these Massey sprayers. They've had them in Brazil for a couple of years now, but, but I believe this is the first introduction to the North American market. It's pretty cool. It actually got a lot of flexibility. It's definitely a cheaper sprayer. It's a base entry sprayer because for those of you guys who don't know, Brazil is a much, I'd say, lower, more lower cost market. So that's why these things are introduced down there. But they're bringing this to the North American market as a low cost option for their sprayer. Because they're still going to have their Fent, their premium line, which is a more expensive, higher option sprayer. But this is more of a basic, kind of more or less to match the Apache or a small Patriot. It's going to be lighter. It's going to be kind of neat. 860 gallons on the sprayer. Cool. That's a pretty sweet gleaner. I always knock the silver cedars, but they are pretty cool. There's a gleaner. I do like the amount of space you get in here. You need to change concaves or something. Rumor has you can have the rotor out in 10 minutes. What, you gotta mount one like that? Power ladder, as Brian would say. Oh yeah, there's the rotor. So this is a cool system. Let's see how many get locked in here. The rotor of this thing is not like a case or a John Deere where the rotor spins this way on those. This one spins this way, or I think this way actually. And it basically, it brings the crop into the right, sends it this way and then out the straw chute. Then it actually goes down in the cleaning chute. Pretty dang slick. I don't think I've ever really been in a cleaner before. Been around for a while, they're tried and true. That's what I mean when the feeder house comes in on the this side. So normal combine, the feeder house the entire width. This one's only right here. That's new. They must be making updates to the ideal because that exhaust box is brand new. It'd be nice to hop up there and take a look. But I'm guessing they made some updates to this machine. Everything looks the same right now. Now this is the steering wheel this version. I'm not sure how I feel about a combine with the steering wheel. In the field, I would love it. But on the road, I don't know, it'd be interesting. It'd definitely be different. Mike Mitchell had this combine and it had a bear of a problem plugging the chopper but it would plug right here and the problem is you can't open the chopper because it's plugged you couldn't get it out so i'm looking to see if they changed anything but yeah that's a mower so they did put a beater so before they did not have anything kicking the straw out behind the rotors that just dropped them straight down but now they introduce there's a hydraulic motor right here that I can't see what it spins, but I'm guessing it spins a beater. So they, this is definitely an updated machine, that's for sure. I've always liked the ideal. It's got great technology. It looks like a great combine. It was just released too early. So it looks like this is the first combine where they made some adjustments. It's not a hydraulic motor, it's a pump. It basically cools the rotor gearboxes. So, but this is a, an updated model. It said the engine box chains that has the auto dock system on the headers, so that's pretty neat. The, the drive couplers, come out on a hydraulic ram and the actual connections for hydraulic and electric come out together too. Really neat design. That's a, that's a pretty cool piece of engineering, Atco. Now we're in the fence realm. I'd love to try a Fenton tractor someday. They just seem like really solid machines, well-built, great cabs, and this Rogator sprayer. Starting to see more and more of them around. They're, uh, I know the local co-op in my area has one, if not two. It's pretty cool. But here's what I would be interested to try. So as you guys know, we have a Cat Challenger MT-865B. So this is the nine, this would be like the old seven series. Our MT-865B would be very similar to this one, this 1167. I would be curious to see 
how this thing works. Because this is very similar to their 1151. Actually, be closer to this, this mid-spec, I think. One of these two. But anyway, it would be neat to see it. I bet the cab interior is very similar. Nope, nope, just kidding. Okay, so the steering wheel is the same. This steering wheel is the same from the old Challenger series, but the, the command arm, that is completely different. It's a CVT. And this would be different to drive, that's for sure. Well, that works. But it'd be neat to try one someday. Like I said, we our cat's getting a little older. It's got like 22, 2300 hours on it. So we're not sure what we want to do if we're going to go a quad track route or if we're going to stick with a two track. But we're going to know we're going to need something. This Fent cab looks pretty slick. Left the key in it. What did they do that for? And right across from the Fent tractors are the Claus tractors. So this is the new Zerion 12 series. It's a quad track, a four track. But what's different about this tractor is the frame doesn't articulate. Like our tractors, you have a basically a, a center point where the tracks actually don't move. The, the actual tractor moves. Where this one, the tracks actually turn, they steer. See, they got tie rods, they actually steer. That's different. It's very different. It probably would not turn stationary, but it's a neat, neat, neat idea. Got 590p horsepower. This is now we're in what's called the Varied Industries building. This is basically just where they have all sorts of miscellaneous kind of businesses that kind of want to show show off what they got. Well, if you want a booth outside, it costs a lot of money. So this is a much cheaper option for folks that have a smaller company that don't want to pay for a large booth. Best sprayer tips in the business. That's what we run on our sprayer. That looks familiar seen a lot more drones at this at this uh, show seen like four or five drone manufacturers drone sprayer manufacturers we're just leaving the varied industries not a lot there not really too impressed with it it is what it is so we'll keep walking around see what we see so we can get some more interviews i want to take a look at the big bud the big bud tractor is here it's it's big it's bulky it's <laughs> different i don't love the look of it but we'll, sh we'll show you guys ah there's a familiar booth the green one we'll head over there here shortly Pretty sure this is Zach Johnson Planter. So for those of you guys who know, uh, next spring when you see Millennial Farmer planting, row 20, he gives issues. My fault. <laughs> I, don't, I know he won't though, it looks like a good built planter. My wife actually works at the factory that, that makes these. I think this sprayer is pretty freaking cool. 1600 gallon sprayer, 120 foot sea and spray, carbon fiber boom. And what a sea and spray is, is it sees weeds and sprays them. There's your cameras. Take a look at this beauty. Cool, but it's still being used. 4250. Oh, here's the new one series balers. It's kind of what I'm excited about. It's got an integrated net wrap lift. So we don't have to hoof them up here. This will help lift them. <laughs> I know a thing or two about that. Always a good looking combine. Look at this thing at 80, 20. I have never seen one in my life. 6,000 engine hours, fully restored. Oh. I'm guessing the 26th one ever made. That is sweet. Look at this thing. Two hydraulic outputs, wide open rear end. That's cool. This, what, what is this? I thought you know the good type of green, not the green that looks like a dog threw up on it. Yeah. What, what, what's up with this? I mean, other than maybe some four color choices, it does look like one heck of a combine. That, that is true. See, now Andy, if you want to know real equipment, there's a red booth about halfway across, way, about halfway across down there. That's that's where you should go. That's where the real equipment's at. Well, I don't know. The dark green's over that way. I'd rather go get one of those X9s. Dark green? No, that's still not my kind of green. It's close enough. Yeah. It's close enough. I'd probably rather go with that green than the uh, red one. It's a fake one. You know what? The red may take its beatings, but it works for us simple 
farmers that want uptime and cheap equipment. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I can't disagree with that. <laughs> everything breaks, right? That, that's Just true. the Lexions break more than that's, everything else. And they can't get parts for them. Well, that thing is huge. That's all it is. You just kind of tune everything out. Wow. Next at. Oh, man. I see. I spy something that I've sprayed with before, that I've driven before. Big brute. This thing is sweet. It was pretty fun driving if you guys remember this car to this video right here when I visited Welker's four years ago now. Got to drive br the Brute and it definitely got a big upgrade this year. The weeded system looks pretty sweet. Thing is huge. Massive. That hood is 12 feet tall. At least 11. I'm six foot five. Oh, jeez. I'm 20 feet ahead, and they can just see the tip of the cab. Pretty cool, though. I like the idea because the thought is he's going to use cat engines, cat transmissions, more off the shelf stuff so you can work on it yourself. I like the idea, but interesting to see if it takes off. Hey, I know this tractor. Yeah, this fence looks familiar from Ohio. That's Brian Brown's. Well, I appreciate everybody who's come by and said hi. It's been fun talking to everybody. So now I'm just walking through the software booth, gonna make my way over to the AGI system. Man, New Holland's got their own shed. We're looking at a different forward drivers to here sometime in the next couple years. And I'm really hoping to look at an FR 960. That would be a beast of a machine. I think that's actually what that is right there. That's a 12 row corn header, big drum. That's a beast. Just stopped into the AGI booth. Awesome guys to chat with. There'll be a video coming on them yet. We had their system for the first, working for the first time all year last year. Had some great results. Have have a lot of stuff to chat through with them. So there'll be a, there'll be a separate video coming on that. But for now, let's uh, let's keep rolling. See what else we can see. Oh, I saw a lot of these when I was down in Brazil six months ago or so. But I did not see one this big. This looks like a massive, a stupid big header. It's gotta be 60 feet. The GTS is a Brazilian draper company. They're all right. They're, they're lightweight, that's for sure. Or Brazilian header company, because I know they make corn heads too, down in Brazil. They're just starting to get them into the States, and man. So here's a 50 footer. I've seen this head quite a bit. GTS XS50. This has gotta be 60 footer. Holy smokes. That is huge. 60 feet of head. I wonder how much it weighs too. Be nice if they had like a weight on there. Golly gee willikers. You gotta have a gooseneck to haul this thing. <laughs> 62 feet ahead. That is nuts. Flip knives. Holy crap. That wouldn't work uh, everywhere. It definitely wouldn't work in my area, but in the flat grounds like Illinois, it might work. But jeez. For reference, the biggest draper sold and, sold and made in the North America is 50 feet. They have a 60 footer. That's pretty cool. This skid, you can basically put a grain truck or just any semi and turn it into a water hauler. Now this thing is pretty sweet. Wow, rotary tile plow. Sheesh. Thing would be kind of cool to see running. That's for sure. There's all your field demos and everything like that. I'm not a big fan of field demos over here, guys, because it's kind of unrealistic corn. They play like an 80 day corn or something really short and uh, it's all a big show. They, and you don't get to see the combined grain tank too. You're gonna see losses, but you can just open up your sieve, slow your fan down, and just have crap grain in the tank. So I won't be going over there today also because I don't have time. So I apologize for that, but there you can kind of see they got autonomous grain carts going with case. They got the new 715 quad track going over there, which is pretty sweet. And yeah, all you know, the field demos are way the heck over there, which I don't have time to do. Because I'd rather get you guys some quality content of other cool things that I see. Black Knight Magnum. Oh, I love it. I know that. You know what I'm excited about though, guys? That 7150 up there, it's got 50 more bushel grain tanks. So the new things on the 50 series, it's got a variable speed feeder, feeder house drive. 
It's got all the automation systems, AFS Connect systems. Alrighty guys, I am here with Jason with Terracam, and as you guys can see, we have a large piece of machinery behind us. So Jason, what do we have here? Uh, what we have is the Nexat uh, tractor. It's a uh, controlled traffic tractor that we're farming on tram lines with, and we have several different attachments for it. Uh, harvesting is one. Or we have two different heads, a draper head and a corn head. And then we have a uh, tillage piece. Uh, Vatterstad or Dagelman would be the ones that we would uh, use. Then we go on to planting. We have a Vatterstad high speed planter oh, that's that we're running. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a sprayer that's made by a fast nice. sprayer width. Yep, yep. Sprayer widths are 135 feet Ooh. and then a 225 feet. <laughs> 200? Yeah. Wow. And the thing, the reason for that, we can go so wide with that 225, is your traditional self belt sprayer working on 10 foot. Right, yep. And we have a 50 foot wide yep. span to start off with. So yeah, that makes sense. Looks good. So when you say that your vehicle, it's like a, a carrier a, a vehicle, so you're saying that this harvester can be unhooked and you hook on another, like a, yeah, a tiller yeah, piece? It's, it's real, it, the way, easiest way to explain it is it skips through quick attack. Oh, yeah. We drive up to a piece, lift up, and connect the hydraulics, connect the electrical, lock it in, and it's and away you are. Go. Go, go reverse, it takes about a half hour to take off. Yep. Uh, you set and then you go on to, uh, after harvest, you grab the tillage. Yeah, and, that, and that's a really cool concept because, you know, typically you have to have a planting tractor and you have to have a combine and you have to have a sprayer. Yeah. Whereas with this thing, I mean, in theory, you could do it all. And you, yeah. If you're set up with the right field sizes, I mean, you could do all of that with one yeah, so piece of machine. so the setup we have here is a million and a half. Sounds like a lot, mm -hmm. but if you get a sprayer and you get a tillage, it's a sprayer you can eliminate a whole other self-propelled sprayer. You can yep. eliminate a tractor or tillage. So a whole, a whole system of, I don't know, three million? You're probably, you're probably going to get money ahead after buying each implement and then it's Really? That that's Our really yeah, a million and a half for all the modules or yeah. what, okay. what are we calling it? About three million for all the modules. Three million for all the modules. Yeah. Yeah. Are and they the called modules or yeah. are they okay? Well then really it's, like it's, it's still it's still coming still, out with we're it. Still developing yep. It's uh, some of us call them modules, some yep. of us call them apps, ah. some call them implements. Yep. Be kind of modern with the yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, you, and you, that, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. That's awesome. And then, so this one's obviously your harvesting one. You know what? What do you have? A twenty-row corn head or something yeah. like that? Twenty-row corn head. Man, I have a fifty-foot draper head. Oh, wow. The grain tank looks huge. Yeah, the grain tank tanks uh, eleven hundred bushel. <laughs> That's a whole yeah. semi worth. Yeah. Uh, for propulsion, it's a. Uh, Two 550 horsepower engines Oof. that uh, go on to a electric generator. Okay. And from for for moving it, the, the electric uh, powered motors. Run Perfect. 280 kilowatts. Oof. That's pretty good. Convert that to horsepower. It's That's a 1.4 horsepower to kilowatt. Yep. Yeah, that'd be about right. Man, that's it though, right? Yeah, just, I think 400 kilowatts is right around that 620 horsepower. Something about right, 1.4. Oh, that's crazy. Well, it's it's a pretty cool machine. I cannot. I hope I get to see it in person someday working. Yeah. It's uh, it's. I'm really looking forward to kind of. It's kind of neat seeing a different concept of a vehicle out and about as opposed to the traditional. When you, yeah. You uh, so we're we're farming on 45 foot paths yep. or tram lines. And if you think about our planter being 30 rows, that works out to about 18 rows. Yep. We're running a 20 row corn head. People say, well, you're wasting rows. <laughs> the reason we have the 20 row corn head is uh, when we're going down our path, we got corn growing right up on the side of our tram lines. Oh, that makes sense. And so we don't knock off a, a, a cob. We harvest that out or that row that we're yeah. right driving right next to. Yeah, that makes sense. You turn around, you know, like, turn around, you're going to miss a row. On the, on an end we have the extra one. Yep. Well, and the, and the cool thing about this is it's, it enables controlled traffic farming. And I think everybody that's around with farming agrees that compaction is one of the biggest yield robbers that we have. And when you have so many different widths of planters, widths of combines, everything else, it just creates so many compaction. Whereas this thing, how wide are these tires? These are two feet. Uh, yes, seven fifty. So yeah, so yeah, about two feet. Yeah, about two feet. Uh, so I mean, the one thing about that field compaction. 
no form that wants to drive on the field, yeah. but they know they have they, things that they have to, but it's driving, getting a green card. Yep. And what we're doing here is we're trying to make it so that you unload at the end of the field. You do, yep. uh, if you're working quarters, you go down and back, you should be full, unload there. Yep. If you're not full, you're it's a Pretty dang minute, close. minute and 15 seconds to unload 1,100 bushels. Oh my gosh. So, that's you, pretty you, good. You, you should be able to stop for a minute to unload your yep. machine and not lose a lot of them. Yeah, yep, and one when you can fill a semi in one track, I mean, yeah, that exactly. also helps. Yeah, you're having to turn it off uh, before you can even think about turning it off. Exactly. Oh, that's nuts. Well, Jason, I really appreciate oh, yeah. the time. That was Thank a pleasure. You. Thank you. Yep, take care. Thank At you. your chaff spreaders. There's your cleaning shoe. Man. Wow. Look at the size Pretty cool. Farm rescue combine. I just missed it, but this cab can actually raise up on hydraulic cylinders. Look at this. There's so much room. It is unreal. All it is is just axles, drive line, transmission. That is unreal. I haven't had you on camera yet. It is the famous, I don't even know if I, am I worthy to be in his presence? He's so famous that I just, I'm, I'm shaking in my boots right here. <laughs> it's always good to see you, my man. Oh, always good to see it's you. It's always nice to see you, Ryan. Yeah. All right, Brian, let's go do some shenanigans. That's right. Oh, we got, oh, those two I think will jump on. So we're waiting on Mike and yep. Andy. Did you make it? Hello? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Don't over. flip her! Yeah. Woo! Yes. <laughs> I yeah, love it! No, no we're, we're we'll, be, we'll at, be back. We're gonna go look at that Nexit combine. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> 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 that was the saddest burnout I've ever seen. <laughs> Alright, both of you guys. <laughs> that is sick. <laughs> Big brute after hours. And we got Laura Farms and Brian farming videos. Andy Dole. We got everybody. We even got Salford Terra. <laughs> Scott, what do you think of these shenanigans? I, I, they're out of mind. <laughs> I agree. Well, guys, that was a fun, a fun night. It is 10 o'clock and I'm just leaving. So it's, it's going to be a long drive home, but it was a blast. I had fun hanging out with everybody. I had fun talking to all of you. Thank you so much for everybody who flagged me down and said hi. I appreciate each and every one of you. So thank you so much for watching. I will uh, give me some retroactive prayers and hopefully I can get home tonight safely. And we'll uh, see you in the next video. So thank you so much. Take care, take it easy, stay safe, and ta-ta for now.